welcome back uh, in this final video for the course i'll just summarize what we were able to do within the course also what we were not able to do within this course and how you can move forward um, within your journey in machine learning so the topics that we covered primarily apart from uh, mathematics was basically introductory machine learning okay so this is just sort of a brief uh, taste you got of machine learning we just had 30 hours we also looked like uh, looked at some few applications okay so please do not take this course as being a thorough course in machine learning you just got an overview machine learning is a vast subject but hopefully you got some idea of what things are happening within this field the first part of the course was deep learning and specifically we looked at ANNs, uh, CNN, CNNs and RNNs. Once again all our discussions were kind of preliminary here. Uh, we only looked at backprop very, very briefly. Thorough courses in machine learning will actually go into it. Our point was to be able to give you a flavor of what these things are, why they get into trouble and how they work and how maybe you can play around with them so that when you want to apply it a lot of black box tools are nowadays available even tensorflow and when you want to apply it hopefully you should have some background in what these methods are so that's what we covered uh, that was a good portion of the course uh, deep learning itself was a good solid portion of the course we also had uh, brief discussions of classical machine learning uh, binary trees uh, binary trees random forest unfortunately we didn't have time to discuss applications of that. Uh, Dr. Ganapati's team itself has done a lot of work on binary trees and random forest within medical imaging. Uh, they have publications there too. Uh, SVM are classic algorithms. They are slowly going out of fashion, but as has happened throughout history within uh, not only machine learning, but also in general numerical methods, there are things that go out of fashion and then come back. Uh, but unfortunately, we did not have too much time to discuss SVM. It is a very interesting algorithm in itself very different from the kind of algorithms that we saw. Again, we saw a brief introduction. KNN and then of course, we had unsupervised learning algorithms such as k-means and PCA. Now, one thing that you can do when you face a practical problem, um, let us say you are looking at just to give you an example, uh, weather prediction or monsoon prediction within India. Okay. So, India itself has you know you can see that maybe up north will be different from west will be different from east will be different from the south. But maybe there are other natural portions that kind of aggregate properly. Now, instead of trying to predict whole the whole of the monsoon in the country at one shot, you could probably figure out that there are four different kind of networks that predict in a particular area well. Now, how could you figure this out? Um, if you try to put the, get the data and try and get an unsupervised algorithm within there, okay, when I say data, I, I am being deliberately vague. Uh, this word data is overloaded, but let us say you find out genuinely that there are four clusters, four types of behaviors. Maybe k-means can help you there, maybe PCA can help you there. You can think of unsupervised algorithms as sort of a precursor to even supervised algorithms. So, that is one thing. Um, so, that is one place where you can apply unsupervised algorithms. Naive Bayes again we discussed only very, very briefly, but uh, often times when your data is uh, sparse, by sparse I mean it is you do not have too much of a data set. Naive Bayes can perform sometimes surprisingly well, uh, even though the assumptions are all actually unphysical, it tends to perform reasonably well. We also did uh, several other topics there which I am not summarizing here. But apart from this, uh, Dr. Ganapati also covered variational autoencoder and GANs, which are uh, right now the quote unquote trending topic within machine learning. This is what is known as generative models. And generative models can be useful for uh, many, many, many different fields. Unfortunately, once again, we did not have time to discuss applications of that. Hopefully, we will put up some extra videos uh, after uh, this course is over. We also discussed a few uh, applications in engineering and science, specifically PDE based ones uh, that we looked at. Hopefully, you can apply it to almost any field that you have looked at, at least in terms of basic applications that you can do very quickly using machine learning, we have discussed a few applications. Now, unfortunately, the topics we did not cover 
are larger than the topics which we cover that is going to be true of any course actually if you want you cannot have both breadth and depth. So, we actually sacrificed depth for breadth within this course. Now, one common complaint and I guess it is not really a complaint, but it is a suggestion and we do understand it we did not cover coding ok. We specifically we did not cover coding in frameworks for example, how do you code in TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch etcetera we did not have time and that was honestly speaking that was not the purpose of this course also. Um, our purpose primarily was if you see some publication or if you see a paper and lot of people are sharing their papers online. Most of this field currently as it is developing is there only in papers it is not there in a textbook. A textbook takes too long to write and to summarize and by that time the move field has moved elsewhere. We are ourselves planning to write a textbook based on kind of the material that we cover so that you have fundamentals ok. So, a textbook can only cover funda fundamentals and th this field as rapidly as it is growing is basically within paper. So, our purpose uh, and if you are able to succeed in this we will be very happy was that if you take a paper it does not look like all Greek and Latin to you and you are able to figure out you know at least 50 60 percent of any publication the machine learning portions and then you are able to see how this person would have applied or why this person would have applied this method. You know why did this per person apply an LSTM here, why, uh, why a convolutional LSTM here, why a fully convolutional layer, uh, a layer here, okay, why a segmentation type of architecture and why an encoder decoder act architecture. This kind of idea if you are able to get uh, both Dr. Ganapati and I would be very happy because then we would have succeeded in the purpose of our course. Okay, because once you know this then you can implement practically anything because learning these frameworks does not take too much time at least uh, at least the preliminary functionality of this is not very hard it is not too hard for you to learn. People are putting up their codes it is the basics it is the basic idea that is a little bit hard to get ok. So, that is one other thing that we did not cover and hopefully we are planning to put on some extra videos and more about that later. We did not cover applications of many of the algorithms that we actually talked about. We went through them really rapidly. For example, well convolutional LSTM I just talked about, GANs we did not uh, discuss, we did not discuss you know MLE map Bayesian. How do you actually apply them? You have just seen them in theory. They have beautiful applications within inverse problems. I was planning on showing one such application there, but unfortunately time was too short and it would have become a little bit too complex for you naive base, this, binary trees, random forests, SVMs etcetera. There are lot of them have actually got very, very nice applications in engineering and science, but this course was too short for us to cover that. One very important topic uh, that we did not cover is reinforcement learning. This is within engineering and science it is extremely useful in uh, what is known as controls, okay. um, how to control something, you know, how to make sure that an inverted pendulum stays upright controlling of an aircraft etcetera, etcetera. Um, so, reinforcement learning is slowly, uh, is slowly coming into this field. It has always had heavy applications within the gaming uh, sort, sort of video game playing uh, that side. Google has bought uh, DeepMind which started with doing uh, heavy reinforcement learning for several problems. Now, there is a full course by Professor Balaraman Ravindran on NPTEL. We would very highly recommend that you go through that course ok. The videos are up online, he is the expert on this topic within India. So, we would highly recommend that you take a look at that in case you are interested in this field, it is a vast field in itself. It would have taken us about a week at least to give us, give you the beginning ideas, but Professor Balaraman Ravindran's course is there uh, right now available on NPTEL, we would highly recommend that. Uh, the last topic which is expected to get more and more popular in the future is probabilistic uh, graphical models we did not have time for this. Now, since we did not have time for a lot, lot of topics we are actually planning to upload more material which will be publicly available on YouTube or some such place uh, if it is a video otherwise you know just on our websites if it is a you know written material etcetera, etcetera. If you are interested in uh, this material or knowing whenever we put up this material whenever it is probably we will start doing this this summer May, June, July. Uh, if you are interested please contact us on this form um, on this link here uh, you will just be asked to put an email and if you are interested in some specific video you can put that. Um, we have also put up the same link on the forums for those of you who are there currently on the NPTEL forums. So, please contact us here in case you are interested.
Okay. Finally, for those of you who have finished this course, uh, several of you have asked us both in our live sessions as well as on the forum on what should you do next. Okay. So, first is of course that the field is moving extremely rapidly. If I tell you to solve problem A today, it is quite possible that somebody might have already solved it by the time I finish speaking. Okay. So, it, uh, it is important to know what your actual interest is. Now, our videos, uh, our like, course was pitched towards people who are in uh, engineering. Okay. So, something like chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, maybe even electrical engineering. Actually, the course was neutral to all that except for the last few applications that we discussed or in physics, chemistry and they are not traditional uh, computer science students. Okay. So, we are hoping that you already have some knowledge of some field reasonably well at the very least at the undergraduate level. In that case, you can start thinking about, oh, this was the kind of application this person did for CFD. Can I try something similar in my field? Okay. So, uh, our experience with the live classes at IIT Madras have been that whenever we present this course, usually several ideas automatically come from the students and we hope that some such ideas have come to your mind uh, also. Okay. Um, now, if you want to get better expertise in this, ideally it is best to start with some paper that seems interesting to you. That is the most important thing. Please start with something that actually looks interesting rather than something you know, oh I would just like to do it just for the heck of it. Okay. So, it is much better if you are actually interested with something. Find out some paper with interesting results and ideally since you are starting, look at some paper who has put up, uh, who have put up their code either on their website or typically most people will put up their codes on GitHub and they would have given links to that uh, within their paper. In fact, uh, one of the applications we discussed right now have put up their code on GitHub, uh, the PD paper and that is a good place to start. You can just take a look at it and see how people have done it. Okay. Try to read the paper and without looking at the code, try and replicate its results. Then as and when you get stuck, that is when you should actually refer to how the people, uh, how the researchers have actually utilized it and put up put it up on their uh, and have put up on their website. Okay. So, if you iterate with this with multiple papers, you will find yourself very rapidly gaining confidence in your ability to take an idea and actually execute it as code. Okay. So, that is important and once you have some confidence, you can try Kaggle which is a sort of data science competition platform. Uh, you can also program some projects ideas of your own from scratch. Uh, please remember something that we have been emphasizing multiple times. Any application comes with two things. You have to have some amount of domain expertise and you have to have some knowledge of machine learning, at least enough to know the, why something would work and why something would not work and what problems you could encounter during training. Um, so, with this, uh, we will end this course. We apologize for all the glitches and hitches that happened during this course. There were several problems both on the forums as well as in the assignments. This is the first time that we are running this course on a, as a MOOC. So, there were some teething troubles. Hopefully, it did not completely spoil your uh, experience of the course and hopefully you gained something. Uh, as I said, in case you are able to find yourself uh, understanding something that is either discussed online or, or, or while reading a paper, we would uh, be happy that we have actually succeeded in our aim for this course. Uh, thank you and uh, good luck. Mm -hmm.